Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're on the river today. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different video. Uh, normally I'll be fishing and kind of talking through it, but today I'm going to answer a question which a lot of people are often asking me, uh, which are my favorite flies. So I'll start uh, today by talking about nymphs. So as a lot of you would know who have come along to my clinics or done tuition with me or just have seen inside my fly box, um, I keep it pretty simple. So I take the CNF, little CNF design chest pack here and inside it I've got a few different types of nymphs and some dries and then a lot, to, a lot of different sizes and a lot of different weights. Uh, for me I really think that the most important aspect of a fly is the bead colour, the bead weight and uh, the size and profile. I focus a little bit less on pattern than a lot of others. Uh, this is just my approach. Um, other people do go about things a bit differently. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but this is how I like to do it. So I thought today I'd just talk through my three most popular flies that I like to use. So when I come to a new river, I'll often start with what I would call my confidence flies. Uh, these patterns are not patterns I've invented. <laughs> They're very famous patterns uh, and they work all around the world. Uh, but I will, I will talk through them a little bit. So, uh, so the first fly that I like to use is a thread fly. Uh, the thread fly is a really popular fly all around the world. Uh, it's got a lot of different names in a lot of different countries. So in New Zealand, uh, we call it normally a thread fly, um, which is the kind of traditional translation of the chick name, uh, which is where, from my understanding, the pattern originated, uh, like a lot of good fly patterns. Um, in America, some people call it the soft tackle carrot. I think in Finland, they call it the red ribbed killer. Um, in Australia, they might call it a squirrel nymph or a, uh, a heron partridge. Uh, but anyway, it's a really good fly. You can see it's got some of the aspects that it looks really buggy, like uh, something that a trout would eat. Um, it's got normally a coctelion or partridge tail. Uh, it's squirrel or hares fur body, quite scruffy, and it's quite a, this is quite a bulky fly that I like to put often on the uh, on the point. Uh, you can see it's got a pink rib. Uh, it's often uh, glow bright or some other similar um, sort of fluorescent material. Some people use red, others orange. Some people use like a chartreuse or like a light green. But for me, I quite like pink. Uh, then you'll be putting a partridge hackle, and uh, in front of that, you're going to put some sort of a peacock dubbing. And this is a super basic fly, uh, it's a bit more of a bulky fly, so I like to fish this one a little bit closer to the stream bed. Uh, it looks like maybe a caddis or a mayfly, but the beauty of these flies is they don't look like any one thing, but they look a bit like everything. Uh, I will fish this fly in a couple of different bead colours, so I really like copper and silver for beads. That's uh, very popular at the moment all throughout the world to fish with copper and silver coloured beads. But it's also uh, light metallic pink is a really good colour, as is the classic gold bead. Uh, sometimes in more clear water, uh, or for very clever fish, I'll use the, the nickel or black beads. Um, but the main colours that I'll tie this in is copper and silver. Uh, I put this normally on a jig hook, this fly, and I tie it in sizes, probably normally it's a bit of a bigger fly, so I tie it, tie it between like a 12 and a 16, or sometimes an 18. But you can really vary that depending on what size the um, macroinvertebrates or the bugs are in the river that you like to fish. So the next fly we'll talk a little bit about um, is some vari variant of a tag fly. So the basic thing about this sort of fly is it's going to have a bright orange butt, um, then we a darker body and then some sort of um, CDC collar and then a bit of peacock behind the bead. I use the same bead colours as I would with the thread fly. Um, and you don't actually have to use an orange tag on this. The classic uh, orange tag is obviously with an orange tag, but often you'll see them with a pink tag, a green tag, or sometimes you'll even see a combination of colours. Uh, I personally like the classic orange tag, but you can't really go too wrong. Uh, this fly really doesn't look like anything in the river, but it really works. Uh, it's really a good fly. I normally tie this fly from about size 14 to 20, um, and again on a jig hook. I think it looks quite nice on that hook. Uh, the, I think this fly has also been originating from the Czech Republic uh, or that sort of area of Europe and it's super popular uh, with lots of competition anglers. Uh, I didn't use this one in Spain at the Worlds but I've used this in Slovakia in small sizes, uh, definitely in Czech Republic, it's amazing there and throughout America when I fish there and of course here in New Zealand. Uh, so the final fly 
that I'll talk about is a pheasant tail. So you probably will see here I've got an entire side of my box just in pheasant tails and it's pretty basic. Uh, it's a pretty basic fly. It's been around for a long time. Uh, you can tie it with a hot spot or without and you can tie it with CDC or without. I really like it on a silver, copper, gold or black bead. Uh, it's a really looks really good on those uh, to me and if I don't know the river this is one of those flies that you can fish with confidence absolutely anywhere in the world. Uh, it was the best fly for me at the last two world champs I've fished, just small pheasant tail, looks like everything, not very uh, aggressive for the fish, quite a subtle fly. Um, I also like this fly for quite educated fish because I think it's just one of those flies that's going to be, uh, it's always going to work even if you're not quite sure what the fish is eating. So yeah, uh, all the flies you've seen in the video, um, they're much nicer than what I tie. Mine are pretty scruffy and nasty looking. Uh, they were tied by my friend Jan in the Czech Republic. Uh, if you guys are interested, if you tie your own flies, you can make them. But if you are interested in buying them, um, I don't sell flies. I don't have time with the university. But my friend Jan ties really beautiful flies. Uh, and he is a really experienced fisherman. He was bronze medalist at the Youth Worlds a few years ago uh, in individuals. And um, I'll leave his links in the in the description of the video if you want to reach out to him and order any flies. Uh, he sends them all around the world. And if you're interested in any sort of uh, urinymphing tuition or guiding, um, I offer that. Uh, so you can send me an email. Or if you'd like, I also hold semi-regular clinics uh, where I teach uh, fishing classes. So yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video this week. It's a little bit different, I know, but uh, it should be, should be interesting for some of you that have been asking what sort of flies I like to use. Uh, but hopefully I'll be back next week with a normal fishing video. I'm out fishing now in the river. Uh, so I'll get back to it and I'll see you all in the next video.